Not so long ago, a significant revolution took place. Every enthusiast could, for a relatively small amount of money, acquire a device capable of soaring into the air and showcasing the surroundings from a perspective previously accessible only to the airplanes and helicopters. Today, when it comes to drones, as we will be discussing them, practically anyone can afford one. Therefore, I decided to create this video to demonstrate how drones fly, why they typically have four motors, and what sensors they use. To achieve this, I built a drone model, a gimbal model, and purchased several sensors. So, I invite you to continue watching. And we'll start by asking a simple question. Can we build a flying device that has only one propeller and one engine? Of course, you can build an airplane, but today we are interested in devices that can hover motionless in the air. It turns out that it's not possible, because the entire drone would immediately start rotating in the opposite direction to the propeller. You can test this yourself by sitting on a swivel chair. Rotating slightly in one direction will cause the chair to turn a bit in the opposite direction. Helicopters deal with this by having a tail rotor that counteracts such rotations. However, such a helicopter must also have the ability to change the tilt of the rotor. Only in this way can it fly forward, backward and sideways. Of course, there are remote controlled models with such mechanisms, but this mechanism is a bit complicated and it's better to go a different way. So, maybe we'll make two rotors. One will rotate in one direction, the other in the other. This way, the machine won't start rotating around its own axis. One rotor wants to rotate the machine in one direction, the other in the other, and everything cancels each other out. The idea is good, because many helicopters with two rotors have been created. Some have two rotors in line, others side by side. They no longer need a tail rotor, but the rotors still need a mechanism to tilt, because there is no other way, for example, to fly sideways. We aim for a maximally simple solution one where we only have motors with propellers and no other mechanisms that would complicate the design. It turns out that using a four motors work perfectly. Why perfectly? Because we only need four motors and nothing else, no other moving parts. This is enough for the drone to fly forward, backward and sideways so it can ascend, descend and rotate around its own axis. And of course, it can do all these things at once. To show you how it works, I've prepared such a model. It consists of four motors and four propellers. I can control the rotations of each motor separately with a potentiometer. Let's start with the fact that of course we have two types of propellers here. Two propellers are designed to rotate in one direction, and two in the other. If the conditions are calm and all motors are running at the same speed, the drone does not make any rotational or lateral movements. If we skillfully adjust the speed, it will elegantly hover motionless in the air. If we increase the power, the drone will ascend if we decrease it, we will descend. And now let's move on to maneuvering. If the pair of propellers rotating in one direction rotates faster than the pair rotating in the opposite direction, the drone will start to rotate. Each propeller in the drone, in addition to lift, generates a torque, as I mentioned at the beginning of this film. If the four torques do not zero each other, the drone will rotate additionally.
When it comes to moving forward and sideways, the drone needs to tilt. When the drone hangs motionless above the ground, the lift force is balanced by the force of gravity. However, if we slightly increase the thrust and tilt the lift force vector, a force is created that allows the drone to fly sideways or forward. In this simple way, the drone will immediately fly in the direction in which it is tilted. The more it tilts, the faster it accelerates in the specified direction. To tilt, it is enough for example that two propellers start rotating faster. Notice that these are propellers rotating in opposite directions, so the torque still cancels each other out and the drone won't start rotating additionally. By manipulating the rotations of the motors appropriately, the drone can tilt essentially in any direction. These few simple tricks are enough for the drone to have complete freedom of movement in the air. But you are mistaken if you think it's a primitive device. To ensure stable and precise flight, advanced technology must stand behind all this. So, let's take a closer look at the construction of the drone. First and foremost, we need efficient motors. Toy drones are equipped with ordinary DC motors, whose rotations are controlled by voltage regulations. Exactly such motors are used in my demonstration model. However, Every drone from a slightly higher shelf is equipped with brushless motors. Many years ago I made a film about electric motors, the link to which you can find in the description. I recommend watching it because it discusses the operating principles of various electric motors. Now I will only mention that brushless motors cannot be simply connected to power. They require an advanced controller that will provide the correct voltages to each of the three wires tens of thousands of times per second. This is what a typical module called ESC looks like. It may be shocking that such a module is essentially a tiny computer with its own software, and we are only talking about the controller for one of the several motors on the drone. Despite its small size, the motor you see has a maximum power of 140 watts. So, theoretically, four such motors on a drone have power comparable to a washing machine or a quite powerful electric bicycle. In addition to powerful motors, drones need electronic support to maintain flight stability. Not everyone knows this, but if we hang a drone in the air, and then remove the remote control, the machine will automatically ensure that it continues to hover perfectly in one place, even if there is wind. And if the drone loses contact with its operator or determines that the battery level is too low, it will autonomously fly back to the takeoff point and land safely. One of the essential devices present in drones, as well as helicopters and airplanes, is the IMU. These are sensors, such as gyroscope, accelerometer or compass, that ensure that our drone knows its orientation in space perfectly. It also knows whether it is accelerating, thus whether it is ascending or descending. This allows it to react immediately to unexpected gusts of wind and other circumstances. So, it guards the drone to maintain stability. I bought a few sensors to show them to you. Here is a gyroscope with an accelerometer. And this is a compass. This is how an IMU module taken from a drone looks like. Note that it is suspended on vibration-reducing rubber elements. Gyroscope and accelerometer units are so-called microelectromechanical systems, MEMS. They contain microscopic moving elements with a size on the order of one thousandth of a millimeter. The vibrations of these elements, due to movement of the entire system, cause a change in the capacitance of the capacitor 
and are recorded by the circuit. We won't delve into this topic in more detail because we wouldn't have time. Interestingly, each of you has such a circuit in your smartphone. Thanks to this, you can control games by tilting the phone or change the orientation of the screen. Actually, the smartphone lacks only motors with the controllers because besides that, it has all the key elements of a drone. In addition, drones are equipped with a GPS receiver. It serves so that in an emergency the drone can autonomously return to the home point without the operator's assistance. It also helps the IMU sensors to keep the drone motionless in one place. Most drones also have bottom distance sensors. Most often it is an infrared sensor. One diode emits light and the other registers it. This helps the drone not to hit the ground and to know exactly where the ground is during landing. A common solution is also a small downward facing camera. Thanks to it, when the drone hovers low above the ground, it constantly analyzes the image from the camera and has even better accuracy to hover in one place and not to slide sideways. It's worth mentioning the barometer present in drones, which is so accurate that in the case of flying indoors, where there is no GPS, it can estimate the flight altitude. It's not a rule, but often drones are also equipped with collision sensors. Sometimes they work in all directions and do not allow the drone to hit a tree or building. Once they were ultrasonic or infrared sensors, now they are most often just cameras whose image is analyzed by electronics. That would be it regarding the flight itself. But let's be honest, nowadays we don't buy drones just to fly around. Currently drones serve us mainly to take wonderful photos and videos from a perspective that until recently was not accessible to us. How do drones manage to get such smooth, high-quality footage? As we established a little earlier, during the flight the drone must tilt in various directions. And since we want our recording to be stable, we need camera stabilization. To show how it works, I've prepared another demonstration device. The gyroscope and accelerometer unit checks its inclination many times per second. The microcontroller analyzes this data and adjusts the servo mechanisms so that the camera is always well leveled. My device is incomparably worse than those in drones, but it shows the mechanism in action. The set of motors stabilizing the camera is called a gimbal. The gimbal on a drone is suspended on flexible mounts to not transfer vibrations from the motors to the camera. All of this makes modern drones provide excellent video quality. And personally, I highly recommend everyone to try this hobby, especially since even the cheapest models from well-known manufacturers already provide a lot of fun and image quality more than sufficient for an amateur of aerial photos. Thank you for watching the video and encourage everyone to get interested in this hobby. If you own drones, write in the comments what kind and how you use them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up.